evening everyone good evening and welcome to a super amazing lecture lecture number 5 neural control and coordination sense organs and in today's class we are going to start with human eye so in your lower classes in your 10th also you studied about the detailed structure of the human eye so today we will be having a quick recap of all those that we have learned in your class 10 class 8th and all those things there is nothing special or knew that you must study only a very few part regarding the retina and name of certain cells which you must study new in this chapter so without wasting our time let's get into today's session on human eye those so are brand new to the channel don't forget to join our telegram group at t.me slash neat underscore bio point where daily session updates regular discussion polls and quizzes will happen over here those who are watching the session right now, don't forget to hit the like button, do share the video to your friends and subscribe the amazing platform for more updates on biology. So let's get started with today's session on sense organ and in the very first lecture we will be studying about the human eye. Sense organ is actually those organs which are concerned with sensation. Clear? associated with sensation that is we can smell through our nose we can taste by our tongue we can hear by our ears we can see by our eyes and we can feel by our skin right so there are mainly five senses that is smell is through the receptor known as nose sight is by the human eye Touch is by the skin. The feeling of touch is given by the skin. Hearing is actually given by the human ear and taste by the fifth sense organ which is the tongue. So mainly in the chapter or mainly neat you have to study about the human eye and about the human ear. But a small idea about taste then about touch and smell have been given in the NCRT. So we will have a quick look at those as well. So, nose is containing specialized mucus coated olfactory receptor. Guys, those which are receptor with smell, you will call them as olfactory nerves. Okay, olfactory nerves. When you study about eyes, that is those nerves which are associated with seeing or sight is known as optic nerves similarly when you study about the human ear those with the audio connected with the audio you will call them as what auditory nerve so similarly in respective in the tongue and touch also you will study okay gustatory receptors in tongue which are specialized for receiving the sense of smell so that is the main function of the nose nose and tongue detect dissolved chemicals the chemical senses of gustation which means the taste olfactory which means the smell are similar to each other and interrelated so when your mother cooks a food item in the kitchen also you will smell it first similarly the taste will automatically come to your mouth in the form of salivation you will start salivation by thinking how sweet or how tasteful that food will be right so similarly they are interconnected that is what which have been mentioned over here so the nose and the tongue which are being interconnected their functions are almost interconnected that have been mentioned over here so this is the tongue the tongue is the function is mainly it perceives the taste it can go with the taste such as bitter sour salty sweet so guys i'm giving you a homework over here this is a homework. Recently, we have find out that the fifth taste which the tongue can receive. Just comment me on the comment section which is that. The first one to comment it, I will pin your comment. Okay. Clear everybody. So, bit, apart from bitter, sour, salt and sweet, fifth sense of taste have been find out so you have to understand and tell me that is comment it below so we are moving on to the topic that we have to study today which is the human eye what is human eye 
this is the socket okay this is what you will call them as the socket of the skull which you will call them as what orbit what you will call them you will call them as orbit so eyes are actually paired structure eyes are actually paired structure which are located in the socket of the skull which is known as the orbits clear so eyes are actually paired structure which are located in the orbits which are actually the socket of the skull there are mainly three different layers of the eye mainly we will call three different layers of the eye that is sclera is the outermost layer choroid is the middle layer retina is the innermost layer so sclera is the outermost layer choroid is the middle layer middle vascularized layer okay retina is actually the innermost layer clear everybody clear so these are mainly some of the parts of the eye mainly you have to study about the outermost layer that is about the sclera the middle layer is the choroid and the innermost layer is the retina clear soon that for you so this is the outermost layer which you will call them as a sclera then you will have the choroid layer and the innermost layer will be the retina layer done everybody so firstly we have to discuss about the sclera sclera is actually the white portion of the eye when you look at the eye the white portion of the eye you will call them as what the sclera so this outermost layer is sclera it is made up of opaque dense connective tissue opaque dense connective tissue and it bulges anteriorly to form the transparent cornea so like this and they will bulge on to the front to form a cornea it gives what is the function of sclera it will give the shape to the eyeball so these are the main points i will highlight the points once again for you to identify those it is the white of the eye the white of the eye is called the sclera it is made up of opaque dense connective tissue it bulges anteriorly to form the transparent cornea and what is its function it gives shape to the eyeball so this is the sclera and this is the cornea the first two part that we have studied so this outermost this yellowish layer which i am highlighting right now indicates what the sclera layer okay this is the sclera layer the sclera layer bulges in the anterior portion to form the cornea as well clear yes so guys this portion okay this portion is actually what you will call them as a sclera what are the properties that we have studied it is a white portion of the eye which bulges in the anterior to form the cornea clear yes coming on to the choroid layer it contains many blood vessel so that is why you will call them as what choroid layer is vascularized okay vascularized choroid layer is vascularized that is it will contain many blood vessel look many blood vessel are originated it appears bluish in color and over two third of the eyeball thick in the anterior part to form the ciliary body so the choroid layer will form in the front to form what the ciliary body okay the ciliary body it forms iris in the front of the lens it forms iris in the front of the lens as well as it will form the ciliary body i will just tell you about that so this is the choroid layer the choroid layer will extend over the lens to form the ciliary body and towards the front of the lens it will form what the iris layer okay these are two important things choroid layer and this is the iris so this region is called the iris region clear and the black dot in the center of the eye that you will see is called the pupil layer okay so what is choroid it is a pigmented and opaque structure which is a visible colored portion of the eye so which is a colored portion of the eye which is a visible colored portion of the eye it is a choroid 
the aperture surrounded by the iris is called the pupil and pupil diameter is regulated by the muscle fibers of the iris okay the pupil diameter is regulated by the muscle fibers of the iris done everybody yes so that's all about the choroid layer so we have studied about the sclera layer firstly we studied about where the eyes are located they are located on the paired structure in the orbit then we learned about the three different parts of the eye that is a sclera choroid and the retina followed by the structure of sclera in detail we have studied what is the main function of the sclera it gives shape to the eyeball and what was the function of the choroid the choroid contain many blood vessel and it is a colored visible portion of the eye the aperture surrounded by the iris is called the pupil and the diameter of the pupil contraction is regulated by the muscle fibers of the iris coming on to the lens this is the lens right this is the lens it is a transparent crystalline structure which is held in its place by the suspensory ligaments attached to the ciliary body so this is a previous year neat mcq question this is a previous year neat mcq question okay you must study that so how is the lens placed in its position by the suspensory ligaments attached to the ciliary body so what are the different parts over here that we have studied we have firstly studied about the sclera which is the outermost layer then we studied about the middle layer the vascularized layer which is a choroid then we studied about the retina then we studied that the extension of the sclera towards the front part of the eye is called the cornea and the extension of the choroid layer is known as a ciliary body above the lens and towards the lens it will form the what it will forms the where is it iris yes okay the central part of the iris you will call them as a pupil the human lens is located in its position by the suspensory ligaments attached to the ciliary body clear yes next i will tell you this in a very small one right now fovea centralis what is fovea centralis fovea centralis is actually the yellow spot just for your identification they have been given like this okay fovea centralis but when you refer the above diagram that is the diagram before you will see a small region over here which is labeled as macula macula or the yellow spot or fovea or the yellow spot clear so this fovea or the yellow spot is actually the site of best vision because the photoreceptor cells are maximum concentrated over in the yellow spot whereas coming on to the below you will see another point over here which is called the optic disc or the blind spot it is actually the region of no vision you will have no vision over there what happened because all the blood vessel it is a place where the blood vessel leaves the eye blood vessel leaves the eye or the optic nerve leave the eye done everybody yes so we already studied about what is suspensory ligament suspensory ligament is actually the part of the eye that is keeping the lens in its fixed position next is the retina oh my god yes next is the retina one second yes retina is actually the innermost layer of the eye it is a site of vision okay retina is actually helping in the sight or the vision so the retina mainly consists of three types of cells what are the three types of cells you will have the ganglion cells you will have the bipolar cells and finally you will have the photoreceptor cells clear you will have three different types of cells associated with the retina of the human eye that is the ganglion cells the bipolar cells and the photoreceptor cells of the eye and how is the order that i have given you over here arranged they are arranged from the inside to outside portion 
inside to outside portion that is over here is the number so i am telling you what is the position or what is the movement of light in the retina through the three cells what is the answer that you will give for me over there the position of light you will see that the light will move from photoreceptor cells to the bipolar cells into the ganglion cell so how will be the movement 3 to 2 to 1 and next we will have the movement of a nerve impulse how do you induce or how will you tell the formation or the movement of a nerve impulse the nerve impulse usually moves from the ganglion cells to the bipolar cells to the photoreceptor cells. Clear? So, from inside to the outside, you will have the ganglion cell, bipolar cell and the photoreceptor cells. Clear? Photoreceptor cells is the rods and the cons. Rods and cons together you will call them as what? The photoreceptors. Clear? So this is the ganglion cell and this is the bipolar cells. So this is what I have mentioned right now. For the light to pass, the light will pass from the 1, 2, 3. Oh my God. Oh my God. The last thing I told a mistake over here. So just one second, it will move in the opposite direction. Okay. I have just got confused with the light and nerve impulse. The light will transmit over like this. Okay. The light will transmit over in the direction that we have told from inside to outside. Done. Look how is it moving. The light will move from the ganglion cell into the bipolar cell into the photoreceptor. The photoreceptor will be the last one. So it will be right 1 to 2 to 3. Whereas the nerve impulse will be from the photoreceptor cells 3 to 2 to 1. Clear? So I have made a mistake over there. So if you have written that, please do correct it. Nerve impulse from 3 to 2 to 1. Clear? Nerve impulse is in the opposite direction. Light is in the forward direction itself. There are mainly two types of photoreceptor cells which are present in the human eye. That is number 1 is the road cell. Number 2 is the corn cell. Road cells is actually helping in the dim vision or in the night vision. Whereas corn cell is associated with the daylight vision. Both of these will contain photopigment. Just write it. The rods contain a photopigment called a rhodopsin. Rods will contain a photopigment called a rhodopsin. And cons will contain a photopigment called iodopsin. So what are the two things? Rhodopsin and iodopsin. Clear? Clear everybody? Yes. So what are the major differences between a road cell and a con cell? Road cells actually help in the scotopic vision. That is in the night vision. Okay. Night vision or the dim light vision. Using the pigments rhodopsin or visual purple. Don't get confused by this term. Visual purple is actually similar to rhodopsin. Whereas corn cell actually help in the photopic vision. It is associated with the pigments iodopsin or visual violet. So corns are associated with a pigment called visual violet. Whereas rods are associated with a pigment called visual purple. Clear? And the corns will help in the color and bright light vision. Whereas rod cells will help in the dim light vision. And for the formation of this visual purple or the rod option, vitamin A is a very important part. So vitamin A form is needed by the retina in the form of retinal which combines with the protein opsin to form rod opsin the light absorbing molecule so what is your advice to eat vitamin a for the formation of which pigment for the formation of pigment visual purple or rod opsin don't get confused with the two terms visual purple and visual violet so corn cells actually help in the formation of what photopic vision or the color or bright light vision whereas road cells will lead to the formation of a scotopic vision or a dim light vision and for the formation of the pigment inside the road cells vitamin a is a very important factor this is actually a small sentence that have been mentioned in the ncrt that is green red and blue 
green one second i think i will highlight that for you but it won't get formed white in color but anyway so actually red red color then the green color no it become black right yes so red color green color and the blue color will together in the eyes forms what forms what it will forms white color now i think it will highlight it says blue itself because it's actually the automatic property yes finally what they are telling it will lead to the formation of a white light like this okay white light like this so red red green and blue will finally contribute to the formation of what a white light so that's important red green and blue will finally lead to the formation of a white light so this have been actually mentioned in the ncrt so we have mentioned it over here in the slide blind spot i have already mentioned blind spot is a region where the photoreceptor cells are not present it is a region of no vision zero vision or no vision the optic nerve leaves the eye and the retinal blood vessels enter here yes oh my god in the last thing also i have mentioned a wrong thing over there today my mind is out yes here is actually what i have mentioned over here is oh my goodness yes actually optic uh, uh, that is uh, the blind spot is the area where the blood vessels will enter the eye and actually optic nerve is leaving clear so that is a point which you should keep in mind one second let me take out a break we'll continue right now okay just five just two minutes we'll continue with this class right now clear What the point everybody area where the optic nerve leaves and the blood vessel enters is what do you call them as the blind spot this will be followed by the macula or the yellow spot macula lutea or fovea centralis or the yellow spot so it is present lateral to the blind spot is a yellowish pigment spot called the macula lutea with a central pit called the fovea centralis it is a thinned out portion of the retina where only the corn cells are densely packed. Actually, we will tell equal concentration of corns and rods, but more corn will be present. Then only we will have the visual activity with the highest resolution. So name the area of the eye, name the region of the eye where you will have the image with the highest resolution or highest visual activity seen in the retina region. Where in the which part of the retina region you will see it in the yellow spot or the fovea centralis. Or the macula lutea clear is this clear for everybody yes so guys towards the friend region you will see a fluid filled space over here so this is a fluid filled space between the cornea and the iris or the lens you can call either lens or iris so this region you will call them as the aqueous chamber the space between the lens and the retina is filled with another fluid which you will call them as the vitreous chamber. Okay, aqueous chamber is the space between the cornea and the lens. It contains thin watery fluid called the aqueous humor. 
vitreous chamber is actually the space between the lens and retina it is filled with a transparent gel like fluid called the vitreous humor when you go for the mbbs and you do the anatomy dissection and all you will see the dissection of the each eye then you will have a clear idea that the aqueous humor is actually a watery fluid when you burst the eye what happened the watery fluid whereas you when you come on to the dissection of a vitreous chamber you will see it is a jelly like fluid clear now we are going to learn about the mechanism of vision that is the light in the visible wavelength you just have to read the ncrt on these areas because not a lot of question will be asked just portions that we have already over will be one mark question but this can be a statement type question for your neat exam so light from a visible wavelength okay point number 1 will enter into the eye through the cornea and the lens so light will enter into the eye through the cornea and the lens it will be focused on the retina it will be focused on the retina and that retina will generate impulses in the rods and the cones so what are it light will enter the eye through the cornea and the lens it will induce a sensation in the retina which will stimulate the rods and the cones light induced a light that is passing on will induce a dissociation of retinal from opsin okay it will induce the breakdown of retinal from opsin which will leads to the change in the structure of the opsin that leads to the change in the permeability of the membrane which leads to the difference in the potential difference of the photoreceptor cells and finally you will have what it generates an action potential in the bipolar cells and then the ganglion cell you learn that in the bipolar cells and then the ganglion cells everything right right everybody finally you will see that the action potential point number 10 that is the action potential are transmitted by the optic nerve to the visual cortex region then the optic now will analyze that and finally the image will be formed on the retina and their memory and experiences the reading clear so this is going to be the mechanism of vision firstly the light is going to enter into the eye then it will be focused on the retina then it will generate the impulses in the roots and the cones which as the light will fall on the retina the dissociation of the retinal from opsin will take place that leads to the change in the structure of the opsin the membrane permeability will changes that leads to the difference in the potential difference in the both ganglion and bipolar cells and that will be taken to the cerebral cortex or the visual region of the cerebral cortex neural impulses are generated and the image will be formed and retained in the retina of the eye done so that's all about the eye very soon sharp at 7:30 next 5 minutes we will come with the human ear as well to so see you guys bye bye thank you so much my throat was not well that is the main reason why we were not taking the classes and uh, next two days also maybe there won't be any classes for you guys that depends there won't be any live class in the upcoming two days i'll inform you about this bye bye guys thank you so much sharp at 7:30 stay tuned we will have the human ear lecture as well